So this is um, where we come from originally. So when I came into Linaro, the way we handled ARM socks was very different from today. Basically, each sock was on their own, and there were lots of issues that we don't have to get into. Uh, I started uh, taking over all the SOC specifics from the ARM architecture, and then eventually pulled in Olaf and Kevin. Um, and originally, there were the idea was to have some other people in there, which then went off to do other things. So uh, we've been doing it since then, and um, do you want to? Um, yeah, but um, that's sort of, everybody says, well, ARM got cleaned up. ARM was awesome. We've, it's so smooth running now. But what we've been doing is a small part of it. And really what happened was that we spun up a bunch of other subsystems, a bunch of other maintainers, um, stuff like common clock, pin control, um, and a handful of other large and small subsystems got started. They got cleaned up. People figured out what we needed. I, I think I counted 20 of them at some point. Yeah, so um, I mean, there, there's a couple of really big ones, but, but there's, there was a lot of work. Um, sometimes I think we get um, a lot of the credit, but a lot of people did a lot of work on this. Um, of course, all of this was to move out board support from Arch Arm. That was sort of the initial goal in many ways, and, and make it multi-platform possible. Um, so a lot of this ended up being finding good homes for it. Sometimes they found homes in other subsystems. Sometimes we created new subsystems. We've been pretty good at avoiding, avoiding driver's misc, maybe because Arndt took over that and Berlin did himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but we have things like driver's SOC, which sometimes you need a corner to put the code it doesn't belong anywhere else, and uh, yeah. And then, of course, the device tree files. That was the big thing. So 80% of, of the patches that we get are now for device trees, and they didn't even exist when we started. So that, that was all. Board specific for each board that you supported, you had to have a C file that called into other uh, files, and every architecture was every platform was doing it differently. So, yeah, um, here are a couple of subsystems. Um, pin control, Linus created that um, in the fall of eleven. Based on author data, it started mid eleven. I don't remember exact history. I, I prepared my slides very late, so I didn't do too much history searching. Common clock framework, same thing. That was a, a, a bigger task. I, I remember um, many long discussions uh, over how to do this. Uh, and it took a lot of work up front to get, get the things right to start. So it took a little bit longer to establish. Um, again, driver's SOC. Um, it came out, two reasons was people need to share things between 32 and 64-bit ARM. Uh, but also Freescale and others had things that they needed to share between PowerPC and ARM. And we didn't want to put dependencies between architectures, so um, it came out of there. Um, an, an example of a, s a slightly smaller subsystem is the reset controller ones. Um, we traditionally been merging that, which is let me remember it. But as I mentioned, we have we have a whole bunch of these. So um, right. So yeah. um, the current situation is. Um, as opposed to the old days where you would start a new SOC platform by creating all the code in Arch Arm and not knowing where to send it, now there is a place to send it, but you have to send it to like five different people and get it all merged at the same time. And th if you get review comments, that one might f feed into the other. Uh, so it always takes several releases to get a major new SOC platform in, which, is, which has been a pain point for a lot of the platforms coming in for ARM64. Um, and the same thing also happens on, on other architectures, like RISC-V is now at the point where they are adding platform support, and they are thinking about how to do that. And there'll be ARM vendors still build RISC-V SOCs and other way around. So right. So we end up having cross collaboration. And so what one observation in the SOC work that I didn't expect initially is that all the SOCs, the, the CPU core is the least important part of it. So the, the ARM SOCs that we have in the tree, they come from like 10 different architectures that had an SOC already with a different core, and now they have an ARM SOC. And some of them will also have some other architecture in the future. So yeah, so um, we start looking at 
what we can do and, and how we can improve things for, for people and, and, uh, and all that. And, and this is one of the suggestions we've heard and, and we start looking at it. Um, one, the final item here too, is that when we start talking to other maintainers, um, we all subscribe to the same lists. And especially for new platforms, it ends up being a 12 patch series and two of them are for us, two of them are for some other driver subsystem, um, three are for something else. and. Everybody reads all the email and decides to whether they're going to review it, um, whether they're going to ignore it and hope that somebody else will see it and review it and pick it up. And there's sort of no way to um, share and, and sort of delegate and say, hey, uh, I'll take this one, but, but I'm not going to look at the others. And, and things end up getting dropped. Yay. Um, great. Did you lose power? Another observation that I had was that um, our work has gotten really easy over time. Um, so it's all device tree files. Most of the changes that we get come from people who have been working with us from the beginning, from 2011, and they've been working on it for much longer than, than either of us have. Uh, so they, there's no reason why we need to be in control of an OMAP submission or a, uh, IMX submission or any of the platforms with the people we, we usually fully trust. Yeah, yeah. So uh, another thing we've been talking about, and that's um, it hasn't hasn't so much been the theme here, but we should be able to get into, out of the way more than more than we are and get more peer-based um, review and allowing platform maintainers to essentially get their 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 code in. Um, Expanding the, the group of committers, essentially. Uh, it's another aspect of this that we will also talk about more moving forward. I think DRM and DRM MISC are definitely leading the, the charge on that, and, and we're keeping an eye on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we're also looking at this from, from the other perspective of like, hey, should we change the group composition and, and when we do this? Um, instead of just sticking to ARM, should we expand it across other subsystems? And that's wha how we end up coming to where we are today and the proposal we have. Uh, I think this is just repeating what we already said. Uh, but yeah, um, a lot of stuff takes a while to come in. And anybody who's tried upstream a platform, especially when there's been a good amount of development downstream on a fork tree, when you're halfway in is when you have all the pain. Um, nothing applies cleanly anymore because all the code has changed. Uh, but it's also not complete enough that you can just move over. Um, so the more we can shorten that time window for people and still keep code quality up, but just making the process easier for people, I think that'll be beneficial. So, um, yeah, um, I already talked a little bit about that, broadening group a little bit. Uh, so we have the concept also of frameworks versus drivers, and a lot of times we have people who have gone really deep to figure out what the framework should be, and they, they are um, you know, deep experts in that area. Um, and they end up re reviewing frameworks and they end up reviewing drivers. Um, drivers sometimes is more boilerplate. Uh, you, you mimic an existing driver. Uh, sometimes there's feedback, you need to fix the framework and stuff like that, but um, letting people uh, still focus on their expertise is really good um, and we expect nothing else. Uh, but we can probably start sharing more of the sort of boilerplate. Here's another clock driver that looks like every other clock driver. Apparently they never do, but um, um, yeah. That, that's yeah. Now one, one example would be the device tree files. So we have maintainers for the device tree subsystem that work on the code. We have reviewers for the bindings, yep. and we have a lot of people who review the actual device tree files, but all the device tree files eventually go through our code. We rely on the sub-arch maintainers to have reviewed most of that before us. So I usually take a look. I see it's, it's fine if I in the rare case that I see something that really sticks out, I might complain, but that doesn't really happen all that often. Yeah. So the, the same thing with, with clock would mean with, uh, we are not in the business of getting in the, in the clock subsystem maintenance. Um, but if someone, maintain, uh, someone sends a new clock driver for a new platform that comes up, then it makes sense to review that together with the rest of the platform. Yeah, and, and by 
having a couple people essentially yep. join our patch stream or, or join patch streams from that point of view. So yeah, um, I forgot what the next slide is, so it's sort of a surprise opening here. So yeah, uh, um, our plan changes. Um, so we're thinking of renaming essentially, taking ARM off, um, calling ourselves the SOC group. Um, we are not going to change if you are a ARM platform sub maintainer and you like your workflow, uh, keep it. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I mean, we're not looking to change that at all. Keep, I, I think keep that's sending a to ARM at kernel.org. Really well. <laughs> you can send it to ARM. Uh, we might we might subscribe one to the other at some point, but yep. yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on both of them. Um, we are going to brave listing this in maintainers probably. ARM at kernel.org, we've always kept unlisted because we haven't had the capacity to deal with a patch onslaught. It's the same as getting Linux ARM kernel in your inbox. Um, and uh, I think with this, because we're going to spin up a patchwork and try to track things a little bit more. We just came from a talk where Daniel said patchwork doesn't work. But uh, <laughs> uh, we're still at a point where it should work. We're, we're a smaller group. We're going to grow out of it too at some point. Um, and then set up uh, possibly a new shared Git tree then. Um, just like we namespace ARM SOC, uh, we can namespace branches in here to give people their own places so we don't step on each other too much, but we can land things closer to each other. Um, and then as I mentioned, set up a patchwork um, and, and start doing some automation. When we start talking to a couple of other maintainers, um, they have a lot of automation already. All of us do um, to deal with our, our workflows. And uh, some of those things we weren't aware of and we wanna try and, and build something more together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of, exactly how and what, but um, it's something we're contemplating. Yeah. So one example of the topic branches would be, like we used to have something like 15 topic branches every merge window, and they would be based on one another, and they would interact in different ways. Uh, we are now down to three or four topic branches in most merge windows, usually the same ones. Um, and if we pull in two or three more subsystems, then we would have two or three more branches in that tree to start with. So each branch of that tree would then be no different from what we now have in a separate tree um, if everything goes, to, goes as normal. But we could also have yet another branch for a new platform that then contains everything related to the, the areas that are normally in one of the standard branches and then just have everything go in one, one thing. And I think that's similar to how the, the x86 uh, maintainers work with the tip tree. Yep. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> so what, what do we do? Yeah, you do it right. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things that I didn't actually cover in any of the slides here was that uh, the people we've been talking to initially about this, because this will be a bit of a trial run, we might do it, we might decide it doesn't actually work, and we want, might want to back out of it. So we don't want to do it too broad too at once, and, and you know, um, so we talked to Linus Valet, we talked to the clock maintainers, Steven and um, um, Mike, um, and we're gonna start probably with bringing those pin control subsystem and um, common clock and clock drivers in, um, and then we'll take it from there. And we're open to talk to other groups, of course. Uh, I've heard a couple of people say, hey, please take these drivers, I don't wanna deal with them. Um, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> we're happy to talk about that over time, we're not looking we're not looking to, you know, take over anything from anybody. We're just trying to optimize for, for everybody and, and make it easier to contribute. But if there's an architecture that uh, has a maintainer who doesn't feel he's keeping up with the, the things for some reason, so uh, in my observation, most of the architectures that we have are fairly stable and require much less maintenance than ARM. Um, but that also means that there's fewer reviewers who can look at the patch that come up when there is SOC specific stuff. So when you have a, a new MIPS SOC, um, you could talk, we, we, we can talk to the MIPS maintainers to see if it makes sense to do that in our tree instead of having it go through theirs as it was traditionally without us trying to take control of something that they don't want us to take control of. But if we, can, we can help. Yeah, this is not a land grab. Yeah. Uh, this is just us trying to figure out uh, what to do. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, the whole spinning up frameworks and, and figuring out what the common stuff should be, um, that was something that took a lot of attention from people and they needed to focus on one area at a time and we're hitting a point where we're still doing some of that, but, but the worst of it is done and, and joining forces makes sense. Right, there was a talk about the interconnect framework today that would be one example that 
we've, we've done that in the past. Like a new framework often comes in through the ARM stock tree and then gets spun out to one to, to a subsystem maintainer. But we could also have it as part of the SOC tree for a while and then have some maintainer join the SOC team for that. So we're going to play it by ear and see how it works or not. Um, I guess maybe we'll talk about this in a year and uh, make a call on, on, on how it's looking. So with that, um, any questions? Also, Steven is here, I think. Yep. Alinas is not here. Uh, Mike is not here. But anybody have questions? Laura? So uh, what is the velocity for new platforms now versus when you first started? Is it larger, sh smaller, about the same? Um, I think when we started, we didn't really have many new platforms as much as we needed to clean up the ones we had. Um, we tend to have new SSEs every now and then, uh, mm -hmm. and, and boards definitely uh, ever so often. I haven't, we tend to have something more or less every merge window, I think. I think they come in bursts. So th sometimes there's five of them, then there's none for a couple of merge windows. Um, also with boards, sometimes we have 10 new boards for one SOC, and then we don't get one new board for that one. So. But there's, yes, uh, within a year we'd have a couple of. We had, we, I think when I started out, we had something like 25 platforms, now we have 70. So it's, and I don't think it's speeding up or slowing down. Uh, just a question on the moving from ARM SOC to SOC. How does, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how it does now, but how, how does the device tree work in that sense? Are you going to have the exact same device tree file except for like two lines different because the, the ARM chip is different? Or you know, is there going to be the exact duplicate of every ARM device tree, device tree in, that has the new CPU in it? I'm not completely sure I understand the question. So we have some, so some SOCs that, are sh uh, that, that we can run in 32 and 64-bit mode, Yeah. and we actually share the device tree files, so it's a sim link from one to the other. We could do the same thing, like if we had a, yeah. uh, uh, an uh, FPGA risk. that could run with the integrated ARM core or a RISC-V core on the FPGA side, that we could share the, 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 the device tree files in the same way. All right, that's, that, that's good. Yeah. The way I think we ended up setting up was that um, you end up having include files that define the common parts, and we have a way to re referencing include files from a different architecture. Any other questions? Sure. So uh, last time I brought in a new uh, SOC to the Qualcomm tree, I needed uh, regulators and mailbox uh, patches. Are you going to have those in the SOC tree as well? Um, it, it'll be up to those maintainers if they want to join. Uh, I think we want to start somewhere and not overwhelm ourselves and see what works, because there's also um, some overlap on maintainers there. So we'll start with this, and then we'll keep talking about how it works and <coughs> whether we want to take it further. Yeah, because the, the typical problem we have is that in the include DT bindings directory yeah. contains stuff that is shared between multiple. But if we're going to solve that by pushing all these things into one common dumping ground or staging ground, then we need to put all all the frameworks that we're using. Yep. I mean, some of my remote proc stuff needs to go into there from time to time, yep. which I feel is confusing for uh, uh, for the developers. Yeah, no, and I think we're very happy to do this. We just need to, um, quite frankly, we need a bunch of tooling and figure out processes around this. So we wanted to start with a couple. And yes, there are the natural boundary is essentially DT includes um, and related things, but we didn't want to over overwhelm ourselves and set ourselves up for a chaotic situation. So what I do think is that uh, we sh we can make it easier to to for you to say like this new driver needs should go through mm -hmm. the SOC tree. Uh, we've tried not to do that too much in the past, so we. we we would tend to say like the new clock driver should really go through the clock tree. We, we and sometimes we took it anyway, but um, we we can definitely talk to every subsystem maintainer now and, and say we're happy to, to take it now because we're already doing the the same thing for other subsystems now. It's more natural with the new model. <coughs> Thanks. No need to run. So the. 
one of the good things that happened from the ARM SOC transition is that, as the slides mentioned, a lot of the maintenance work for what was under Arch, ARM, Mock, and Plat got distributed out into a, a set of specialist maintainers like the clock folks or like the pin control folks. One thing that I didn't quite understand is um, now will you all be merging clock patches directly without their review? No, or? no not, not without their review. Okay. So the review is still in the same hands, basically. Um, and for for existing work that would still go into the respective branch, whereas it would go into the tree. So that wouldn't change much at all. It's just we, we're trying to work closer together. And one of the things we do to do that is have one Git tree with multiple branches instead of so different Git trees. And then there are the other things, like having shared patchwork and other things that we might come up with. But I think there's also an opportunity for, you know, as we broaden the group uh, further on, uh, having people cut across and help out with, with, you know, sort of the trusted reviewer that we talked about um, uh, in Dan Williams' talk, bringing those kind of people into the group so they can help out with review and, and things like that, uh, maybe across, you know, the groups. I don't think, I, I'm definitely not going to touch clock drivers. And, so one, one, one of my first ideas was actually to, to start out by bringing in more of the sub-arch maintainers. Like we, we're, we're among those 70 platforms, we have maybe five to 10 that are really active and we know those people really well and I would be happy having anybody, any one of them on the team. Um, but then Olaf suggested maybe we, we start the other way first and try to get the tooling up to speed and then once once we can work with a larger group of people and have the tools to do this then we can extend it to to more people mm. and then if we're at that point we mm. would work the same way as the DRM MISC group where the idea is you send a patch uh, or you send a pull request and there's a submitter a reviewer and a committer, and two of them can be the same, but you are at least have to have two people involved in, in any pull request. So you can have, if, if you have a platform, um, you want to get it merged into the SOC tree, you need to find someone to review it, and then you can merge it yourself, or you can find someone to review it and someone else to merge it. Or if you push something from someone else, then you just, uh, you, you say, I've reviewed this, please commit this. So it, it could be that I'm not really fully understanding the, the details of ex exactly how things would change, but just from a naive point of view, one of the nice things about splitting things out into independent drivers is that they should, in theory, be able to stand on their own, whether the rest of the patches are merged or not. But one of the key places where that's really not true is, uh, and, and where it might make sense to have a control point on some of the SOC stuff would be the, the DT-related bindings and the include files. Um, are you guys planning to operate there? Um, so the include file tend to go in <coughs> with the driver today. Usually that's the way we end up doing it. And then we've actually pushed back and told people, don't, don't, when you can, when it's just a couple of small constants, just use the hard-coded constants for a release cycle and then add the include file dependencies because adding the dependencies tends to be a little bit messy. Um, and I think, um, I mean, we're not, we're looking to make that a bit easier, but things should still stand on their own. Um, and, you know, that's still the case. We're not looking to make um, people send one patch that adds, you know, a driver and a DT and, and things like that. But if they send it in one series, it'll be easier to, to divide and conquer. And so then guys like Steven, they'll send pull requests to you and then you'll send it to Linus or they'll continue to merge through, they, through they Linus? Will send, uh, they will send the pull request to Linus as before okay. for that branch. And the one opportunity that we have is that if both the clock maintainers or both the ARM SOC maintainers are on vacation during the merge window, then one of the others can just as well send the pull request for the same tree or do any of the other jobs as a fallback. Where I think we might end up sharing some is that we might have one fixes branch, for example. Yep. And we might even be able to do lower latency fixes if there are small trivial changes that, you know, with some time we get comfort reviewing each other's subsystems. Uh, large changes, I don't anticipate getting into anytime soon. But one more, 
one of the most important points I think is we're, we're still trying to figure out what we actually want and if, if you have any input of what you think would be good, then we'd like to hear about that. Yeah, well, it's, of course it's all quite new because the, the details aren't really there, but it, uh, just naively, just to mm -hmm. maybe rephrase what I said before, it seems like for an SOC addressing things at the DT level and the, the related way is really kind of the main control point for what sh it does and doesn't constitute an SOC and everything else is some form of either drivers or arch code. So for the drivers, for something like clock, you probably want clock specialists to be reviewing those or, you know, if you guys are, are getting into clock stuff, maybe. No, I, no, no that, that's not there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, then, and, and then for the arch stuff, probably same story. I mean, you probably want, you know, guys like the, you know, whoever the experts are for the individual arch, arch stuff to focus on that, We're right? So. Gonna, um, I, I, I don't know if people are aware of that here, but Arch, ARM64, anything outside of DT more or less, and Arch ARM, anything out of DT, we don't maintain that. 30-bit uh, ARM is maintained by Russell King, and he takes the architecture patches there. He takes you know, MM and, and all the other relevant things there. Um, ARM64 is, is maintained by Catalan and Will and, and others at ARM. We are, uh, and, and RISC-V is maintained by, by Palmer and, and Andrew, and, and that is not changing at all. I don't know nearly about enough about the architecture, either of them, to, to get those patches. So from my experience with the DRM MISC, uh, the MISC is not so much stuff that doesn't fall into any other brand Git trees. It's more like stuff that the ownership for that series doesn't fall into a certain area. So basically you put it into MISC, but basically means you're going to drive it, you're going to get the reviewers, and because you have the commit rights, you can push it. So a clock um, maintainer, if he wants to push a series that has device tree and other things, that's one way of doing it, having a MISC, SOC MISC or something. That will allow you to basically carry the, the whole series forward. Yeah, I think one of the things we, up until now we worked pretty hard on is to decouple so that you don't need the series, right? So you, you work on the driver, you land a driver, uh, the driver is there, you can build it. Um, you land a DT change that might be described in the hardware that the driver needs to probe, but that's a synchronous from the driver merge. So you don't, today it's been going through different trees independently, and then when they hit, both hit next and they both hit mainline, it magically works. Uh, but nothing is broken until both of them do. Um, and it has, um, it has enforced a certain amount of discipline on the development cycle, I think, is most of that has been positive and healthy. But there are some cases where, you know, it, it's a bit of a steep hill to climb when you're a new contributor with a new platform. Aren't mentioned, you know, if you need to have three, between author, reviewer, and committer, you need to be two different people. Um, not even DRM lets, you know, brand new people that come for the first time in the community to be necessarily the reviewer or the committer. Um, and you build up that, you build up pretty quickly, but, um, you know, we're not looking for people to self-merge just, you know, out of the blue, but we can broadly um, spin up a group of, a broad group of reviewers this way. Um, so yeah, you can land them together. Uh, we've been trying hard because it, it does provide cleaner code to, to separate it, and I think we want to stay focused on that, but they can send it as one series still. Yes, I, I still don't like the DT in, include headers. Um, because it does mean that you uh, have a dependency in the driver and uh, that has caused so many problems in the past, so my recommendation would still be uh, to completely avoid those headers even if we have a mechanism to make it easier to, to have it and change it later. Disagreeing with my co-maintainer here on stage. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also, we also have the opportunity that if you want to add and include file, you send it separately in the series. It gets applied on one branch that's m merged into uh, the branches in the tree uh, as base, but needed before, say, the driver or the DT file, uh, without having sort of loosely connected in cross tree dependencies. You just have cross branch dependencies from one tree, which which a lot a lot less error prone and, and stuff like that. So if um, <coughs> If uh, the SOC tree is going to handle 
new socks and new drivers that are coming in. Are you going to handle trees that have lost their lovers and uh, current maintainers? Like for us, well, for the, some of the stuff I've seen, the SH trees definitely lost its review or everything. I mean, SH but that has blocks. been easy because Renesis is so active on ARM that they tend to, hey, we're removing this on, on SH. It comes in through, through that. But um, sorry, go on. Yeah, I, it was just because I've seen some cases where patches of, or series have kind of been blocked just because that one little part gets ignored. Maybe it just doesn't matter, but is this a route that can sort of support that issue? I, or? I think we can, we can, we can do that. Um, we'll have to figure out sort of what works or not and when to step on toes or not. But yeah, yeah I mean, that's labeling it as, hey, we're doing more than just ARM when we need to do something one-off is useful from that point of view. Great. Yeah, of course, you know, maybe you see a lot more pain, you know, with the merging of the new SOCs than I do since a lot of times these days I'm not tuned in on a lot of that. But uh, just my initial uh, sense of that is that, you know, we have these DT files and currently they're all split out by Arch, right? And so we, we already have SOCs that are in the kernel that differ only by the CPU, right? And all of the peripherals on the SOC are the same. So Again, just thinking from just an SOC-specific point of view on Linux, what really defines an SOC for us right now, I would say, is really just the, the DT files and how they're structured. And so that's something that definitely, I think there could be a lot of you know, improvement on how that goes into the tree and how it's structured. But hopefully the rest, I mean, I, in theory, should just be able to go in independently. So. And there's, a, there's you know, people who want to get rid of DTs in the kernel altogether, which yeah. Um, has both some pretty big problems and some appealing benefits. So, but that discussion I, I, that has been discussion going on for years, right? Over, over yeah. and, and we'll <laughs> see what happens there. Uh, Rob had a question too. So, just for the record, the DT maintainer is not a fan of the DT includes either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. What I just thought of is those typically go in with the binding or that's the binding document and or that's what I ask usually. Um, but once we go to schema for the bindings, then there's going to be a new dependency that that needs to go in before the DTS files go in so we can run checks on the DTS files. And the schema goes in an external repo or in the kernel repo? Uh, for device specific bindings in the kernel repo. Okay. Well, do you want to Just join? like the do binding you, docs today. Do you want to join the group? <laughs> <laughs> I are already offered on the list on the yeah, subject, cool. so. David. So, who do I send my ACPI patches to? <laughs> We'll, we'll take them. We'll take them. Just send them. No, don't CC anybody else. Just send them to us. <laughs> <laughs> ACPI is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, so we can't handle any random crap which we don't want to do it, deal with anymore? No, no, no. I said we'll take, just send us the email. We don't promise to apply it. Or <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> ACPI, you don't need to plan for the specific patches. Yeah. The core ACPI changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Problems already solved. Yeah. So every SOC seems to have a serial port done a different way. Um, I have no problem with you guys taking those patches. Because okay. <laughs> it's usually one in the middle of 12 in the middle, and you need the dependencies above. Yeah, and serial goes with, I mean, regulators is another one. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a handful of them, GPIO sometimes too. Uh, so we'll um, we'll definitely this this is going to be an active discussion over time. Okay, sure. but I'm willing to give that up. <laughs> yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I guess. 
for the people in the room. This is, we'll, we'll figure out this going forward. If it feels like uh, we're stepping on toes, uh, absolutely let us know. And if there's something you want to make sure that you're strongly in the loop in, like Thomas just said, with our Q chip and reviewed by, because Thomas will not, um, will not, um, he will let us know when he's unhappy. Uh, so, um, but others might not, and I just want to, you know, just just let us know. I, we're we're this is not for us to take over from anybody. It's just hey, it's there there are gaps here, and 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 we can f figure them out. Oh, absolutely, and absolutely, and in most cases, I think we're looking to add those maintainers into the group, so they will be part of the group, you know. So, yeah. So one thing I would add is, I know you maintain some of our chunks in four, but you also maintain them for people. Yeah, we do that today. Because it tends to be platforms need to turn things up. Yeah, yeah, we're. <laughs> I mean, just, yeah. just or, switching, or switching to 64K pages just because they got better benchmarks on their SOC. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, um, just like we said, we're not going to touch, you know, frameworks. And, and maybe over time we'll, we'll look at and, and get familiar with it and we can start reviewing patches between each other. And that will be an ongoing process. I assume that for now, um, those of us who are familiar with ARM are going to just keep applying DT patches, we're going to keep applying dev config patches and, you know, mm -hmm. I, most of the people in the group I would be confident, you know, letting do it, but um, just for now assume that ownership stays mostly aligned with where it is just as a, as a group. Okay. Within the group it's like it was more or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Well, we have some mechanics to do. We're aiming maybe to get things going by the next uh, March window. We'll keep going, you know, staging for next release like we are, <coughs> and then try to see if we can get something up by next one. Um, we'll communicate. And all the old email aliases, all the maintainers, you know, just keep, it won't go into the bit bucket if you send it to the old contact people, you know. So. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.